Hello and welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. This is a funding service webinar for the introduction to accepting and managing awards on the new funding service. My name is Susan Salisbury and I'm the engagement lead for the funding service. Um, we'll get started in a moment. Um, as this is a Zoom webinar, um, you'll be able to see and hear from myself and the other speakers, but because of the number of attendees, uh, it's quite impressive. Um, we've had to sort of switch off so that if you you are attending, you just sort of have visibility of what we're saying. You won't have an opportunity to um, turn on your mic and speak out, but there is the Q&A function. So we encourage you to use that to raise any questions for us. And then we've got time at the end to cover questions today. Um, and then if there's questions we don't get around to, then we'll revisit those um, in the future. Um, this is being recorded and hopefully you noted that when you joined the webinar. So we'll be posting the recording online and we do have a repeat of this webinar, um, which will be on the 25th of April, 2 till 3 p.m. Um, and we'll put the Eventbrite details on um, in, in the chat for you to see and sign up to that as well. It'll be largely similar to, to a lot of what we cover here, but if there are any other updates, then we'll obviously include those in the next one. On the agenda today, so as you would expect, we will be primarily covering the award journey. Um, so joining me, we have Tim Lennon, who's the product manager overseeing the delivery of the award functionality, and Tom Davey, who is our principal user experience designer involved in the designing of the award journey. Um, in addition to that, I've got a few updates about a few other sort of things like developments relating to the funding service. Um, and a bit of additional information about how to sort of, you know, sign up to our other sort of uh, channels to stay up to date um, with our communications. And then at the end, as I mentioned, we do have a Q&A sort of uh, portion. So please do raise your questions. Um, before we get into the detail, I'll just give a little bit of a recap as to um, who we are and what we're doing here on the, the Simpler Better Funding Programme, for those of you that might be a little less familiar with, um, with our mission. So our vision is the, um, the Simpler Better Funding Programme is delivering a new funding service for UKRI, and this covers activities, processes, policies, within the end-to-end -end funding journey, both internally and externally. So the funding service is based on a new digital platform that will make it easier for users to collaborate, submit applications and obtain guidance in a joined up way. We're looking to strip back unnecessary bureaucracy where the effort to complete or manage activities is disproportionate to the benefits they bring and really want to make sure that and encourage uh, and enable a diverse range of researchers, innovators, peer reviewers, uh, panel members, research support staff, um, all across our community um, as part of that journey and as users of the funding service. For those of you who have already been engaging with the service and uh, have been using it, you'll have noticed that we've been introducing functionality gradually over the past few years and launching more and more funding opportunities on, this, on the funding service as well. So it's an agile iterative design process where we start off with core functionality, um, which is then further iterated and advanced over time. As we do this, the core things that we're aiming to do to make your lives easier is streamlining uh, across UKRI, standardizing and introducing that consistency and predictability uh, as you go on and, and use it, you know, no matter who you are and, and which council you're applying to. Um, we recognize that this transition um, has been working alongside our legacy systems such as JES. Um, and whilst you're waiting for further enhancements in functionality, it can, there can be um, some frustrations along the journey. But hopefully you're already starting to see some of the benefits and some of the improvements that we're bringing with this new approach. 
So I'm just going to quickly bring all of this up. So here you can see a sort of a basic overview of our timeline for the year ahead. We will be delivering in this next phase, so this year, um, in delivering the new funding service, we're reducing complexity and bureaucracy for researchers. And our main priorities at this stage are focusing on the migration of awards. So from our legacy systems, such as JES, onto the funding service, um, the awarding at scale. So we're making and managing awards within UKRI's funding service and increasing this remains a priority for us over the spring. So over the coming months, um, you'll see an increase in the number of awards being made on the funding service and we'll be further increasing the functionality uh, as part of the delivery of that sort of a part of the service as well. So we'll obviously be focusing on a lot of that today. Um, other thing, other priorities are focusing on the service health. So really thinking about the different users of the service and improving the service for various user types. So for example, um, the reviewer journey or for applicants. So allowing them to collaborate on applications and provide easier access to the information they need whilst writing their application. Another area is better quality data. So improving our data and our reporting for our, for our reporting purposes within UKRI and integrating with other UKRI systems and integration with UKRI's Enterprise, enterprise relationship management system, which essentially um, will support the better coordination of external communications uh, and, and really by working to improve our data quality. In the coming months, we will be releasing further details about the transition from JES, which will include the migration of live awards um, from JES onto the funding service um, and how that works sort of over the summer and ultimately the closure of our legacy systems uh, at the end of the year. I do really understand the importance of you having that information early and uh, having that communicated to you so you're able to prepare for that change. So we will provide further information um, when, when we're able to, so please keep an eye out for that. Um, another thing that comes up that I just want to sort of note is around sort of the, the account types. So we recognize that there's one funding service administrator account type, um, but there is a, a great need for greater sort of sophistication on the, the permissions and the account types and managing access, particularly for research office sort of support staff. So we are looking at this and there's further work that we need to do. Uh, we recognize that we need to do to, to, to address that. But for now, it will remain as that single administrator type. So you'll need to consider what functionality we're introducing with the ward and what you might need to put in place within your organization to, to manage that for the time being. Right. Okay, so I'm now going to hand over to Tim, who's going to talk to you about the award journey. Tim. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Suze. Um, so we go to the next slide, please. Um, so Suze is giving you a really great uh, summary of, of the kind of you know, the approach we've taken around, you know, we're trying to be, we're trying to be iterative and practical about how we build and choose what we build and how we organize this and how we're trying to put together the service that actually um, is, is genuinely better for everything you need to do. Um, and you can see here, we kind of picked out some of the key, I suppose really the real highlights of, of, of some of the areas we want, to, uh, we want to build for. So making sure that in the style of, as you, you will have seen, many government services have, um, have have been doing over the last decade, you can see the whole idea of making sure that as a user, we give you the information you need at the point you need it. So we're making trying to make the service do much more of the thinking so that it helps you to get the tasks that you want to do at that point done clearly. We um, we started to look at how we looked at the, um, and Tom will show this much more detail, the the awards landing page, which hopefully will be a kind of a one-stop shop where 
that's where you'll go to manage and deal with everything around the award and, and, and sorting it out. And similarly, we're trying to build the um, change request designs um, to, to try and be really clear about where things are and um, and, and what, uh, you know, what, what things you need to do next and, and how how to get various tasks progressed. What I um what I do want to identify here is is that we are still in we are still in the significant development phase. So the demo that Tom's about to give you shows you the full product and there is a huge amount of work that's gone into that and there's a huge amount of things you can do in the current product. Um, but we are constantly looking at what people do on the service and how they do it um, and doing user research and gathering feedback to try and understand how we can make these things better. So some of the things that you'll see today may well be already under consideration for improvement or upgrading um, compared, compared to what you can see. So, and actually Sue's talking about, for example, the, um, the user profile and the user authority is, uh, is a very good example of that. What I wanted to just pick out for you is well, some of the some of the things that we're looking to um, still build and improve on that um, that you'll get hints of in the demo. We are looking at how to um, reuse the the groups functionality that's already been built for the opportunity space. So to help you better manage who can do who can do what in the award space. Um, Compared to the, we I think we already already have a strong um, provision for the cost and management, um, but we're also looking at how for more complex awards where there are multiple organisations involved, how we can make sure costs um, are shown clearly for the different organisations involved. There is actually, of course, what you won't see too is a whole load of internal work to make sure that our in our, our users in UKRI can basically get things processed as quickly as possible for you. So hopefully what SBF and, and, and the funding service will do will be generating for you improved turnarounds in some of these business activities. Um, and finally, I know I think one of the questions is already hinged at this is the, obviously there'll be a significant amount of work going in the next six months to begin migrating the, I think it's 15,000 odd awards, which are currently live on Siebel. Um, with the goal of migrating all of those by December. So with that target is that by um, by the end of the year, you will be able to manage all of your open awards in the funding service. I think what I'll probably do now is um, hand on, I think, next slide please, Suze. I think um, we can go straight to um, the demo with Tom, if you're ready. Okay, cheers, Tim. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'll just uh, share my screen. Okay, great. Um, so we're at we're at the funding service. I'm just going to log in. So we're going to log in today as um, a test account. So basically, we've got accounts set up on the funding service. Um, so when we release features or or code, we're able to test that. So um, this is a, this is essentially a test user. Who is a who is a research officer within a within a research organization? So I'll just log in as them. And I'll just give you a kind of full full tour of the award space within TFS. Um, so what we're going to be looking at today is a number of journeys. So we're going to look at how we can respond to an award offer, um, how we can start an award, how we can manage an active award, and also the close process as well. So the first thing you'll notice up here is we've got our awards uh, link now within the, the main header. So this will be consistent throughout the service when you were logged in as a research officer who has access to awards. And when we come into here, we'll land at the awards landing page. So we can see we're logged in as a university here. And underneath here, we can see all of our awards within within this university. So once again, I'll just I'll just reiterate that this is this is a test environment. So we can see this is very very busy. And the reason why this is busy is because, like I said, when when we when we're developing new features, the the engineers will will use this environment to to test and make sure that these features are working before before making them actually live and available to um to our users. So within our awards page, 
we can see all the awards relating to this organization up here. We are able to search. Um, we've got the name of the award and the reference number, um, some kind of key data around the award. So we can see the award holders, um, the funder, as in which council is funding, start and end dates, and the award status itself. And we can also see a task column here. So I'll just take some time just to talk to you about, about tasks and what tasks are. So all awards are essentially um, held within the funding service and any award at any time can be given an attribute of a task. So a task is essentially um, a flag on that award that means that something needs to happen for it to, for it to, um, to move on. So most tasks will all come in as blue. So we can see here there's an offer response due on this one. This one's ready to start. We've got a FES due on this, this one here. And generally tasks will all come in as blue. Now tasks have a, a variable kind of um, value to them. So if a task is um, not picked up for a number of days, say seven days, then the status of that task will remove, will change from blue to red. And then that will, um that will drive the kind of indexing rules around this table which is why we can see all tasks which are red which basically translate to kind of a priority task um at the top followed by blue and then we've also got these yellow ones here so these are open tasks but but there's no outstanding um action required from from the logged in user to, to complete that they're just still ongoing so they might be the 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 task now sticks with UKRI or another another organization to complete. But what we're going to do today is we're going to go in to start off and we're going to have a look at responding to an offer. So if I click into this board here, we can see we are now within the award and we've got a page tile here of award offer overview. So the award status is waiting for our offer response. Um, we have got the link here to the application. So should you, should you ever need to go back and, and, and compare and contrast to the application, we've got a link within the service here. So by clicking that, it will open up a new window where you can see the application as it was submitted. What we've got under here are all the building blocks of the award. So if I click in to um, award details, we can see the details around this award. So when we create awards um, within UKRI, we basically take the data from the application um, that pulls through to our award service and internally the teams can make any changes that are necessary um, or they can continue to prepare the offer document. Um, in this instance, we can see all the details that have been pulled through from, from the application and we've got this change history thing here. So if I click into that, we can see that the award uh, start date has changed here. And that could be because of something's happened in panel or something um, circumstantial or what, whatever that is. We will, we internally will use these this feature to communicate any change. So it's offering a, a deal of transparency as to why data has changed from the point of an application being submitted to an award being offered. And when that happens, we use this update flag on the, on the user interface. So. All this does is basically highlight to the person reviewing the award offer that something has changed. So within the award information, we've just seen award details. We can see the team. Again, this will pull through from the, from the application. We can see the resources and costs in our table here with a breakdown of the total FEC, the contribution, you carry indexation and award value. And that is again, broken down um, by line item within the table here. And from our resource and cost, we can then see a payment schedule. So we'll click into that. And this is the payment schedule, which is basically um, the resource and cost, the total award value that works with our internal profile models and then distributes the money across the duration of the award to give us our, our um, payment schedule. So the payment schedule is, um, is essentially a live page. So these are all due, um, but should you visit an active award where we're in uh, the fourth quarter, for example, this will be updated where payments have been made or if the award is suspended, et cetera. So this is a, this is a kind of live feed from our finance system as to what the state is of that, of that schedule. We can see project partners. 
Again, supplied as part of the application or if they've been added at a later date, they'll appear here. And also terms and conditions. So all awards that are created within UKRI will all be will all be assigned the standard UKRI terms and conditions that will apply to all awards. There's also additional terms and conditions, and that may be um, conditions specific for the, the award due to research, or it could be on the request of the of a research council of one in specific terms, for example, but they'll all appear, appear here as well. So basically what we're seeing as part of our award offer overview is um, bite-sized chunks of data, which you can review um, um, in a more kind of bite-sized way, um, but essentially all these all these chunks here build up into the into the final grant agreement. So our grant agreement is just basically a combination of all the data we saw on the previous page that all writes into one um, single grant agreement. And we can review that here. We've got a sticky um, navigation here where we can jump to specific parts of the agreement, and we're also able to print the page as well. Or um, downloads the PDF from, from that feature there. What we'll need to do is accept the grant agreement by clicking the checkbox at the bottom and saving and return. And that'll then complete our grant agreement here. So we can see that status has no change from incomplete to complete. And then we need to respond to the offer. So should all the information be correct in, the, in this, so after you've reviewed it, we would then go ahead and accept the award offer or there's also the ability to return for amendments. So on the journey of return for amendments, this will basically send the award back to UKRI and we can leave a reason to why we're doing that here. Maybe there's something not quite correct or something needs adjusting or something just needs challenging, but you can leave a message in here and that'll then go back to, um, to UKRI to, to make any necessary adjustments. But for the sake of this demo, We'll assume this is all good and we'll accept this award offer. So we just get a screen, which is a common pattern within, within the funding service. When we're about to complete an action that is kind of irreversible, we'll just get an Are you sure page, which is kind of just a confirmation page just to make sure that we understand what we're doing and in this instance we'll accept the award. Just taking a minute. There we can see the award offer has been accepted. So we can now see that the award status has changed to announced. And the award offer overview page has now um, changed to award overview. So we can see all the same data here. We can still access our grant agreement. We can we can go into any of the, of the details we needed to earlier. We can also start our award now. So we've got this banner at the top here that tells us that we must start the award by the 13th of July, and that's 108 days. So we use the, the start the start window um, for all awards and the 42-day um, notification period as well. Um, but I'll just quickly show you before we go on and start the award, I'll just take you through the journey of a, of a change request. So if I click into here, this is our change request page, and we'll visit this again a, a little bit later where we can see some more... Um, some more states within this change request of open and closed change requests, et cetera. But um, when the award is in the next state, we are able to um, create a change request to extend the, the start date. So we can change the start date here. And again, this is a common pattern for a change request. So the data we, we asked for when we create a change request is obviously dependent on the type of change. But the, the, the journey you go through is very consistent in terms of um, raising the request, filling out the data within the service, and then submitting it to UKRI. So we can see the current start date here. We're able to request a new one. So let's just say it's the ninth. Oops, there's the ninth. We can give a reason to why we're doing that. Um, we also have a link to the grant agreement here. So if we need to reference any terms and conditions, um, we're able to click that link, which will open the, the grant agreement in a new window. So we can we can kind of compare the two side by side. 
we can check and submit. Again, there's this the, the pattern of kind of checking your answers where we can see a break uh, um, a breakdown of the of what of what we're asking for, and then we can submit the change request as well. You see that the start date change request has been submitted, and this just some guidance around what's what's going to happen next. Here. So we can say we can see that UKRI will respond to the research organization. Now we can see we've got an open change request down in our in our table. So we've got the start date here, the states have submitted, and we've also got who it was requested by and when as well. So we're able to keep track on that. We can click into that at any time. And we can see the change request as it was submitted. So we can see the, the data we input, and we can also we've also got a, a kind of what to expect next piece of content around here, which is you'll be informed of the of the change request outcome through TFS, but also through a notification as well. Okay, I'm just gonna pop back. So what we can also do here is submit our start confirmation. So if I click into that. I'll just take you through that journey. So the start confirmations are uh, pretty simple. Um, again, all the data is being captured within the user interface. We've got a breakdown of the award information we need, some guidance around when we can start an award. We've got our key dates around here, around the announced start date, earlier start date, later start date, and obviously the, the actual start date in here. So I'm going to put that as today. And then start our award. Just take some time. Great. Okay. So the award is now started. You can see the award status has changed to active. So this is now an active award. And if we go into our payment schedule, <clears throat> so this will this will now be due. So this will be an active payment schedule and then which will run into um, standard payment. Okay, so this is an active award. Again, all the information is always available as always, but we can now access some additional change requests. So if we go into here, we've got we can request an extension, so change the award end date. And we can also suspend an award as well. So I'll just show you a suspension. Again, the same pattern of, of creating and submitting a change request. We've got um, contextual information around why we might accept the change request or why we might reject the change request. Again, the link to the terms and conditions. We can put in a requested suspension date, an expected resumption date, give a reason here. So let's just put in the date of um, today. Do an expected resumption date of all. We'll just give a reason in this instance. We'll just use project critical equipment is currently unavailable. And then we can also leave a justification here. And again, we can check and submit. Again, there's the playback here. We're able to jump back in and change any of the data we need to. If should we spot an error? But we'll just go ahead and submit that change request. And we can see that the suspension has now been submitted. So again, what this does, this will go into our internal teams in UKRI, which will sit on a similar user interface to the one you can see today, where they'll see a task list of a suspension has been um, submitted. They can go in, they can review that, um, and they'll respond through, through the funding service as well. Upon, upon a decision on a change request, a notification will be sent to an email, but also the 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 user interface for TFS will also update as well. So I'm just going to pop back to awards and we'll have a quick look at the close process. So we can see that Fez is due on this one. Let's have a look in here. Okay, so we can see that a final Spanish date is due on this award. We got the deadline across the top and 65 days remaining. So this, again, on our task list, that will sit as a blue FES due task until seven days before the deadline, or if it was overdue, where it would then become red, and that will that will go to the top of the list then. 
Um, here is the expenditure statement. So if we go in here, similar to the change request page, we have an expenditure statement page. So we can see um, any open expenditure statements, any previous expenditure statements. And this is just a central place where we can kind of access those, those statements, whatever state the award is in. So if we go into the final expenditure statement, here we have the, the data capture form here. So we've got the, the resource and cost total FEC column down here, and then we've got the expenditure as well. So we're reporting on what we spent during the awards. Just add some columns in there. And you should see in real time, this key kind of metadata at the top is going to be updating. So if I just put some information in here, Let's go zero. So we have to input all the information in here. Um, zero is a valid is a valid um, value, um, but we do have to give a value. So if we leave that blank, the page will validate and tell you. In fact, let me show you that now. So we do use inline um, validation throughout throughout the service to to um, reduce errors. So we're giving you. Um, contextual feedback in the page to say see what's happened and how to kind of fix that as well. So if we just fix that, put a zero in, we can then review the final spender statement. We're able to save it as well. And we get again a playback of the final spender statement before submitting it. So we'll go ahead and submit that. And similar to the change request, the same kind of pattern, that expenditure statement is now um, change submitted. We can see who submitted it and when. And we still got a deadline here and we can still access that expenditure statement should we need to. So we can see a read only view with that, that there. Again, that'll then go into UKRI. The internal teams will review the expenditure statement and make a decision similar to a change request whether to accept or reject. If rejected, it'll be returned um, with a reason to why, where you can then. Um, amend the expenditure statement for resubmitting and going through that process again, or if it's submitted, we'll then we'll then continue to the reconciliation process, reconciliation process where the final payment will be made, um, and eventually the award will be closed. Um, okay, so that that was a kind of quick tour of of the award service within TFS. Um, I think I think I kind of covered most most things at a, at a high level. Um, obviously, I understand this. This there's a lot going on. There's a lot, lot, um, lots of kind of journeys and the different change requests and all. But um, yeah, hopefully that gives you a kind of taste of of, of what's coming and how how we work with um with the user interface and, and the processes around them as well. Okay. Um. Thank you. I think I'll am I handing back to to Tim. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you, Tom. You. Thanks yeah, so much. I've got no, I've got nearly ninety questions. So. Uh... <laughs> we will try and uh, we will try and get through those as uh, as as much as possible. So um, so I my screen organised. Yeah. So what we're going to take you through just briefly here is um, I'm not going to I'm not going to read all these slides out to you because I know that's my uh, <laughs> that's my my definitely worst slide behave available. But what we're conscious is that what you're seeing here is is a significant change from how things get done with um, the, the your system chairs and and, and and Siebel internally. Which apologies, I answered one of the questions incorrectly. I said Siebel and actually meant Jez. Um, But the the underlying business processes that you'll be looking at here are um, are all very similar. You can see this in um, in in the point here where it says unless the research council issues a specific start date, new organization will have 10 days, 90 days, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these basic rules will remain the same. Um, and this is really just, this this, this is what we're trying to do here is, is help you appreciate um, all the all the basics of, of, of what needs to be done because essentially the uh, the overall goals of, of, of what we're doing here is, is trying to uh, is trying to allow you to carry on as far as possible with with you know with with your business processes and with getting these things processed as simply and effectively as possible. Um, just want to pick out a couple of things here. So, like the award reference, um, it it's a minor thing. It's actually turned out to be quite an important change for our internal systems. 
um, and you'll, you'll it'll probably find that for you as well. The board, board references, how we reference them were changing. You'll see that you would have seen that on um, on Tom's demo with things like the um, the application ID and the award reference ID and so on, um, and the fact that uh, obviously we've got the home page. But I think we'll probably if we have um, yeah. So so we get the next page, please. Um, so once once you've got live awards going, I know we have I think we have about a dozen institutions. Um, I'm hoping some of whom on this call. Um, who now have live awards on TFS? That will obviously, that number obviously will will start ramping up um, quite quickly come come April and May. So once you've got your live awards on the service, um, these are these are some of the things you'll be able to do. Um, probably one I want to identify here is that uh, we're here where we say view requests. We've got view current and previous change requests. You've seen the change request process from Tom. We're still building some of the additional change requests. So, for example, for transferring awards, this is going to be ready for you in April. But because we've only been able to build it so far for the internal team, that what that means is when you want to transfer an award, for example, you'll need to um, talk to your council engaging with the award to actually then request the transfer process to start. Um, what else do we get there? So, manage current previous version. Yes, you, you'll see the obviously Tom's put out the expenditure statements for you. Um, but I think what I probably also want to identify here is that is that what you've seen is 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 going to in there's going to be lots of lots of changes, both large and small, to what you've seen to try and improve those those workflows and processes for you. Um, go to the next slide, please, Suze. I think this is probably going to answer some of the detail. I know there's been some questions around around news and so on. At the moment, we do only have the single administrator account type within um, TFS. This is a piece of work we're looking at and we're doing user research on right now. Um, but there is that single main administrator type, and there would, and that's that's what you'll need to set up for now. These instructions that you need to actually get going with um, getting these these staff set up obviously again this is a this is our first first goal of the process um, and we're still looking at how to improve the way um, research organizations can get into TFS and and in, in the same way that it's been improving on the um, on the opportunity side to be able to give you more control and more ability to come into TFS and choose what your different user groups can do and how they can manage the awards and so on within TFS. Um, yes, and uh, next slide, please, Suze. So this is, um, as you can see, there, there's there's been a lot of effort to try and put together some of the details and some of the instructions that you'll need. Um, so you'll be able to see that there we've got the um, this webinar will be available on the on on YouTube soon. There's a whole range of resources on the UKRI website about how to how to do these various processes, um, and I know we'll be sharing these sharing these details with you later. So I think what I'll probably do is I think if I, if I hand back over to you, Suze, and then um, then that hopefully will give us some um, enough time to try and answer as many of your questions as possible. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. And thanks, Tom, for the demo as well. Um, so, yeah, you can see I um, got a bit QR link um, happy, but we found it was probably quite a useful way, um, in addition to sharing the links in the chat, giving you the QR code so you can just sort of uh, capture that and use it as well. Because there's a lot of information we want to keep sharing with you. So I've just got a couple more updates. Um, just to run through and give Tim and Tom a chance to go through the questions. Thank you. There's a lot that have come in and we'll try and get us through as many as we can. Um, so really, this was just to, to highlight that as the service is continually improving, that's for a lot of the external functionality that you'll see, um, whether you're a research office administrator 
uh, or an applicant or an assessor. But there's also a range of um, developments happening internally as well, which won't be visible to you. Um, but just uh, so you know that on both sides of the, the fence, there are, is more to be done and, and more coming. Um, so I won't read all these out. But I just think perhaps the one to, to highlight might be around sort of the reviewer invite and um, sort of accept sort of journey. There were a few sort of um, niggles in reviewers sort of accepting their invitation and setting up an account, whether they had an account already or not. And so there's been quite a few changes um, to really improve that journey and sort of make things a lot slicker to make sure that we're getting the reviews in that we need. Um, just before uh, well, at the end of last year, November and December, we released two key pieces of functionality targeted at um, research office administrators. Um, primarily, <coughs> excuse me, um, there was notification notification groups um, managing those. Um, uh, so each organisation can set up what structure works for them for managing um, application based sort of notifications and also a uh, co-edit for funding service administrators. So research office staff with an administrator status accounts can edit all sections of a draft application. There is an edit log in each section of the application. So applicants and administrators can see who has made an edit and when. However, we advise that when you are using this, you coordinate with the applicant or, and we also advise applicants to, to coordinate with the research office administrators just to avoid any issues around saving. So if you find another user has saved a newer version of the application while you're working in the funding service, an error message will appear in a red banner notifying you that your change changes have not been saved. So you'll be aware if, if that is the case. Uh, if this does happen, the amended information will still appear in the relevant text box in the funding service, but you'll need to copy the changes into a separate document, return the application, return to the application overview screen, reopen it, um, and then paste in the any changes back into that section that you were working on. Um, we do advise you then to sort of check um, the for accuracy, particularly around sort of attachments, images, tables, and financial details, and then you should be able to save and return those changes. So really just wanted to, to highlight those um, that process in case anyone's sort of been unclear or come unstuck with that. Um, right. So in terms of once, did I just skip a slide? I did, sorry. <laughs> the use of hyperlinks and references. So applications should be self-contained and hyperlinks should only be used to provide links directly to reference information. Applicants should use their discretion when including references and prioritize those pertinent to the application. And we ask that applicants do not include links to web resources to extend the application. As I said, it needs to be self-contained. Um, in terms of once an application is submitted, this isn't a new um, policy position. It was really just, uh, I was asked by colleagues just to, to highlight it in case uh, you weren't aware, but the service has been designed to reduce the number of administrative checks at the submission stage. The application submission will not be returned for amendment if there are um, mistakes um, and will not consider requests to amend these after it's been submitted. In terms of application feedback, um, applicants will receive feedback when a decision of their application is made. The form of feedback will vary depending on the point at which a decision is made throughout the assessment journey and the type of assessment that's been used. So the, the process of assessment, whether it went to panel or not, and the type of panel. Um, but the primary source of feedback will remain as the peer review comment. Um, we do 
quite often get feedback and comments about the resume for researchers in the innovation section. I just wanted to draw your attention to a specific feedback survey that um, complements a lot of the work we're doing with other funders on the introduction of narrative CVs. Um, and we have the link there to that specific survey, uh, which feeds into that, that wider analysis. Um, so if applicants or your supporting applicants, um, then you can fill it in as a, an applicant. If it's for a specific um, opportunity, please do include those details. But if you have more general comments because you've been supporting a range, then please just reference this webinar just so that it will help with the sort of analysis, analysis and tracking back. And there is lots of further guidance uh, and resources on the UKRI website as well around resume researchers. We have a variety of different support routes. I'm going to whiz through this really quickly, I promise. We have the help desk um, who are there to answer your queries and provide you support and help. Um, we have the email address and the phone number. Um, so please do contact. They're hugely knowledgeable um, and very good. Uh, getting the information. Um, we also have our Simpler and Better newsletter, which everyone's um, welcome to sign up to. So we have another QR code there um, in case you're not already signed up to that. Um, so please do. We have a webinar coming up, which I've already highlighted. Um, other ones will put on the UKRI events page as those sort of get confirmed. Um, we always have a request for people to sign up to our user research, so please contact that email address if you're interested uh, in participating uh, and helping us with further design and development in the future. And we do try and post as much as we can on the UKRI website, including links to our training videos, um, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll continue to update those as the service updates. And that's really just the, the link to the webinar and said another QR code, I got a bit carried away. So I'm now gonna stop screen sharing and invite Tim and Tom back. And we have Jordan in the background to ask some questions. What question have you got for us first? Hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, okay, so the first question I've got is for, for you, Tom. Um, so we have a question in the chat. Uh, my team and I only need an only need access to respond to offers of funding on behalf of the university. Are there different settings for this for different users? Yeah, okay. So um, the answer at the moment is no, but the good news is that it's, it's, it's coming very soon. Um, it's currently in development. So um, they, we are working on an iteration to the, the, let's call it the landing page where you see all those awards. And that'll allow um, users to to filter by award status or um, and also a funder as well. So, for example, if you were in a team that is um, interested in um, offer responses or submitting fezzes, you can you can you can um, you can filter by by those statuses to to be able to kind of focus in on on the task a little bit more. Thank you, Tom. Uh, staying with you for the next one, if that's OK, um, on a similar kind of uh, trail. Can we filter on the main list if we just wanted to see the upcoming final expenditure statements that are due? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So similar to the last um, to the last answer, um, there will be filters coming in shortly that will allow, allow people to um, manipulate that list a little bit. So you can focus more on tasks such as affairs or a, a, an offer start or um a, a, a change request or or anything like that so yeah these are these are things that are coming soon okay thank you thanks tom um moving over to you next tim if that's okay um so we have a question in the chat in the q a should i say is there a difference between requesting for example a start date change before and after accepting the award yeah it's a good question so that yeah there is a there is a difference if you request it before you accept the award um then it's essentially it's it's a simplicity of post. If you request it before you accept the award, um, then that's a simple change made by our internal team. If you accept the award, then you would then need to enter the change request process in order to get that date change, which obviously is a administrative overhead both for yourselves and for us. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, 
Staying with you, Tim, if that's okay. Um, so the next question we have is, are training grants going to be, going to be moved across? And if so, when? Uh, yes, they are going to be moved across. We've got that in analysis at the moment. There's, there's, a, uh, there's a separate team who are now looking at um, what needs to be done to support training, training grants. And I noticed there's also a series of questions about studentships related to that as well. So we are looking at how we would bring across and manage um, all of that information, because obviously, particularly the um, the long long list of students associated with these sometimes will be, we you know, is is a is a significant overhead for people. So that's being looked at at the moment. I can't tell you when it will actually be available, but we as a as a new um, new new awards in TFS, but they will be migrated. I can I can promise that as part of the overall migration from Jess Seymour. Right. Thank you. Uh, staying with you again, Tim. Um, so can all individuals listed as a contact on the project submit a change request or is it just the administrative staff? It's At the moment, it's just the administrators. So um, just because someone's listed as a, as a member of, um, of staff on the project itself, um, that's not linked to whether or not they can submit the change request. They need to actually be a user for the organization on TFS in order to be able to submit the change request. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Tom, and, Tom, come back over to you if that's okay. Um, can the resources and payment schedule be downloaded into Excel? Okay, so um, not currently. So the, the only um, print or download feature at the moment on any of our pages is on the grant agreement itself and the start confirmation. Um, so, I guess the answer is a feature is no, but it is it is styled up in the HTML as a table, so it will copy um, nicely into Excel just with a, a standard copy and paste, and that that would also be the same for the resource and cost table as well. So they're not they're not specific features on the pages at the moment like we have elsewhere, but due to the the markup of the of the HTML, they will paste um, into into Excel or Google Sheets, um, for example, um, quite nicely. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, Tim, come back to you, if that's okay. Um, so can we have different teams doing the offer acceptance versus the start of the grant or change requests? Um, how would this work in the new system? Um, and also just to point out the central post war team review or change requests, are they um, before submitted is, is no longer an option? Uh, right now, there's no teams um available in in the award space so the we only really have those core user profiles of um of the of the research office administrators who can access the service um but the whole world of teams and, and what different people can do is part of the part of ongoing analysis so what's the set there's a second part wasn't there yes there was uh so how would this work in this in the new system um and also um, that our central post-war team review all change requests before submit uh, submitting is this no longer an option. Uh, so I'll rephrase that. Uh, that a central post-war team will review all change requests before they, su they submit it. Is this no longer an option, basically? Um, it's not an option that TFS will manage for you, no. We, we've, we've built the service with the assumption that that, um, that you will do you will manage who can who will who will submit and, and make change requests within the service um but obviously as we as we're able to enhance the the availability of more different types of user and user profiles you may end up being able to use those for example um in a form of workflow management okay thank you Tim. uh sue's coming to you next if that's okay um are there any details around the timeline for the rollout of this functionality absolutely so um we started rolling it out last year with one award that we first pi uh, one opportunity that we piloted sort of that very early award functionality. Um, more recently, we've done another four opportunities that were piloted right through the award stage, um, and they're um, sort of being funded and have been funded. And sort of uh, some of the organisations or attendees of this webinar, I can see, have been involved in those already. So thank you for those and uh, for your feedback. Um, over the next few months, you will still see um, many awards being awarded within JES, and then as 
start to, to increase um, within the new funding service. I can't give you exact timings because uh, it, it's all down to sort of when uh, decisions are made and buttons are pushed effectively um, sort of internally uh, around those authorizations. So do keep an eye out for those, but it will be clear in when you get the notifications and the reward offers, whether it's within JES or whether it's in the funding service. Thanks, Suze. Um, Tim, come back to you, if that's okay, for a couple of uh, kind of grant transfer related questions. Uh, so the first is, are grant transfers between institutions going to be added to the list of award changes? Yes, they are. Um, we've nearly finished building the internal version of that. So um, as of um, April, we should be able to transfer grants between institutions. However, that's a, a request that you'll need to make to your UKRI rep at the moment, we, we can't we can't do that within the um the, with organisations requesting the um requesting the process. Um, however, having said that, the the once the transfer process has been initiated, then um both research organisations will be able to log into TFS to then say to to approve and then manage that transfer. Thank you, Tim. Um, second question on on the subject of grant transfers. Um, so, would suspensions in include a transfer? At present, final claims have to be made, and then the award is reannounced. How will this work? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, with the transfer, the the basic part, the way it's built at the moment is that the when when the transfer is requested, then the initial the, the current um, award is suspended. Uh, and then it needs to be reconciled and agreed by all parties before any any remaining funds are transferred to the new award, which then goes into draft mode and is then basically um, follows the usual approval process. Thank you. And staying with you for the last uh, few that we've um, got to, to, to answer live, Tim, with looking at the time. Um, so with collaborative awards, would you require details of a collaboration agreement? Uh, no, well, TFS itself doesn't. This is probably one of the one of the quite. This is quite a good question to identify where some of the documentation and details that you may previously have submitted directly to the service, um, you no longer do that with TFS. So that that will be potentially need to be handled separately. Um, outside of TFS itself. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any functionality within the final expenditure statement to upload information as an attachment? Uh, for example, uploading data for you know hundred plus students. Um, it's a lot of work manually. Um, could attach a file. No, there's no current facility to upload files as part of the fairs. I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. Um, will post award colleagues be able to run a report that shows all the required actions and ordered by date so that they can regularly prioritise and check that all tasks are in hand? No, they won't, but we are expecting that this is what the awards homepage for your research organisation should be able to support. So rather than running an award, you'll, you, you will be able to look at your homepage to see um, what tasks are outstanding on which awards? Okay, thank you, Tim. Uh, this next question, I think, is uh, was asked at, in the process of the demonstration. Um, I do not see any print on all pages. Yep. Yeah, so um, that's true. The as Tom said, the the key the key area that you can print from is from the grant agreement. If you need to. There's nothing to stop you using the, the browser delivery of the print function for the rest of the pages, but we're not planning to provide print functionality for individual pages within the award service. Okay, thank you, Tim. I think that's all the questions that we were going to try and answer live. Okay, yeah, that's grand and we're, we're going on time. So thank you to um, everyone for attending uh, and for raising your questions and thank you to our speakers. There were quite a lot of comments 
and pieces of feedback and requests for other functionality that were raised. So with those, certainly we um, we digest and analyze those and we'll pass them on to the relevant teams so they can consider sort of um, how we address those going forward. So thank you for, for dropping those in. There's also, when you're in the service, there's a feedback sort of survey uh, button link. Um, so if there's specific things when you're using the service that um, you, can see an improvement that can be made or something's not quite working to how you need it to, please do use that and give the really sort of specific impact, uh, specific feedback as to uh, what it is you need to tell us and sort of the impact of that. And it really helps us to, to build that picture. Um, there was a, a number of questions that we haven't been able to address today. Hopefully we'll cover them off in the, the next webinar. Um, or we'll put together a summary of the, the FAQ and send that out. Like I say, the recording for this and the slides will be put online um, and sort of the, certainly the recording will be on our YouTube channel. So thank you to everyone. Um, thanks for all the feedback and we will see you again soon. If you would like to view more information about the funding service, then visit our website at www.uk ri.org are seen on screen here. For any queries or feedback, please contact the Funding Service Help Desk by emailing support at funding-service.ukri.org or by contacting the Help Desk on 01793 547 490.